So just the other day, I got this package from Paul Rubens, and it's their fourth generation of artist-grade watercolors. So we're going to test them out and see what we think of them. So first, I will swatch all these colors, and then we'll do a demo with an actual painting. So the set that they sent me is a set of 24 colors. I know they also make a 36 color set, but I don't know. I, I didn't use every color, and I don't know that I was missing all that much. I think there's probably a little bit of overlap, but you'll see. I went through and circled everything that I have in my set. Uh, the, the writing is all in Chinese, which is fine. I just don't speak or read Chinese, so uh, I'm using it as a quick reference for the future. So this is the palette that I use, and like I mentioned, I only have room for 18 different colors in here, so I excluded six colors from my palette. I did still swatch them, uh, I just thought there was probably a little bit of overlap with these six colors between the other ones that I had available as well. So these six are Naples Yellow, Chromium Yellow Light, Perlene Maroon, Berlin Blue, Cobalt Turquoise Dark, and a Venetian Red. I just thought that because actually most of these paints are single pigment, I could mix most of these colors on my own if I needed to, and again, I just had to save some space. So right off the bat, Naples Yellow and Cadmium Light Yellow are two colors I didn't include in my palette. They seem nice, they're reasonably opaque, which is sort of what you'd expect from a Cadmium Yellow, and I really just thought I could probably do better with some other colors, so I kept those off. Overall, I thought the range of colors in that red and yellow space was pretty good, actually. This Cadmium Red Light ended up being pretty close to the Quinacridone Maroon, uh, which I used both of them, but... Um, overall, I, I think it's a pretty good range here. The Quinacridone Rose and the Perlene Maroon are pretty similar. There's a little bit more of a pink tone to the Quinacridone, um, but they're pretty close. The Quinacridone Maroon, I thought, was a, a pretty good magenta, um, so I kept that on the palette. I've been getting really nice tones out of this Dioxazine Violet. Uh, I've used it on a lot of blueberry paintings, if you've seen those recently. Uh, and I've been using this Indigo quite a lot as well. This French blue, which, you know, I, I think other people would call it ultramarine blue, came out really vibrant and great. The next one, the Berlin blue, is another one that I didn't include on my palette, because I think I could make this between the French blue and some other mixtures. Thalo blue I obviously included. Um, pretty similar to the French blue, but a little bit lighter. Translucent turquoise and oriental green, I think I could find a use for them in some sort of, like, seascape, maybe. May green, it seems sort of like a sap green um, or a yellow green, something like that. Cobalt Turquoise Dark is one that I didn't include as well. It's kind of like a bluish green. I think I could make it from some other pigments that I have here. The Olive Green Dark is a nice dark green color. The Earth Yellow and the Burnt Sienna both seemed pretty standard. I thought the Earth Yellow was kind of just like a less opaque version of the Naples Yellow, so I'm kind of glad I picked it. Venetian Red I think I could probably recreate with uh, burnt sienna and maybe some of the maroon or rose uh, pigments. The brown umber was pretty interesting. It's almost like a muted dark green color. I think it could be useful in painting some shadows, uh, just as ivory black would also be useful. So that's all 24 colors in this set. Again, the six that I didn't use, Naples Yellow, Cadmium Yellow Light, Perlene Maroon, uh, Berlin Blue, Cobalt Turquoise Dark, and Venetian Red. So I thought a good way to test out this range of colors would be to paint this sunset scene. Now, it's going to use a range of colors. It's not going to go too much into the greens, so it's kind of more of a test of the reds and purples and blues, but I still think it was a decent test of them. So all in all, I used the lemon yellow, the chromium yellow, the chromium orange, the quinacridone rose, the quinacridone maroon, Earth Yellow, Dioxazine Violet, Indigo, French Blue, and Ivory Black, all in the same photo. Uh, I think you probably could have gotten away with a little bit fewer colors, but I thought it was a, a decent test of all of this. And I'm starting with a uh, wet on wet painting for the sky. It's a mixture of the French Blue and the Indigo. I wanted the French Blue, but like a little bit darker. So that's what I started with there. And I left some white spaces so I could drop in some of that violet color for the clouds and the, the shadows of those clouds. Mixing in a little bit of the Quinacridone Maroon and Rose for the pinkish purplish colors that are showing up in the upper left side. And then some of the Chromium Yellow and Orange for those brighter orangey colors uh, in the highlights of the clouds. For the sky fading into the tree line, that's actually the Earth Yellow. It's a, it's a pretty diluted version of that Earth Yellow. Um, so it actually turned out pretty well. I was a little concerned it was going to turn green when it mixed with uh, the blue, but it actually worked out pretty well. 
I struggled a little bit to find the right color here, and that's not really the paint's fault. I just couldn't really figure out what color to make the highlights of this cloud, but uh, I kind of got away with it. I, I think I would do things a little bit differently if I went back, but it turned out decently, I think. For anyone watching that is worried about overworking their paintings, this is probably a good lesson of where I probably should have stopped. Um, I liked the way that the clouds looked in the upper left area right now, um, but I kind of went back in. I wanted to darken the sky. I wanted to add a little bit more of shadows into those clouds with the violet, and I don't know. It's okay. I probably should have stopped a, a few minutes ago, but, you know, you live and you learn. But that's not really the paint's fault. That's more my issue, and I actually really liked the way that the violet and the indigo and the French blue and, and the quinacridone rose and maroon, I really liked the way that all those were mixing together and fading from this pinkish to a purple to a blue. I thought it turned out really well. I thought the pigments blended really well, especially when I was using it in sort of a wet-on-wet -wet type of painting. Um, I was pretty impressed. So after the sky, I moved on to the reflection in the water, and I think I took some learnings with me. I painted this in a much more wet-on-wet way than I did on the top. Um, I used a lot more water this time around, which I think turned out quite a bit better. But I still used the same colors. It's the same earth yellow blending into the same French blue indigo mixture, because um, I think that worked really well up above, so I repeated it down below. Um, just making sure to make it a little bit more darker in the bottom, because there is sort of a, a vignette sort of effect in the bottom area that's uh, more shadowed. And I dropped in a few little bits of this orange rose color. The highlighted part of the clouds and the reflection, it's the same colors as the one up in the sky above, but I, I wanted to try to make it just a little bit darker, so there's a little bit more uh, shadow in those than the ones up in the sky. Um, but overall, it's the same colors. Uh, I let it dry for a little bit, and then the, the last part of the clouds is it's a much more wet-on-wet -wet technique than what I did up uh, on the upper half of the painting. So I got most of the paper wet um, after letting those sort of brighter areas dry, and then I was just sort of dropping in streaks of rose and violet and just sort of letting the watercolor do its job, blend together a little bit more. I think because it's sort of in the reflection, in the water, there's a little bit more leeway for letting those colors mix. Um, but I, again, this is just a good test for the paint as well, just seeing how it blooms, how it blends, um, and again, pretty surprised and uh, impressed by how it's reacting so far. I think the only problem with painting a reflection scene like this is that you always end up liking one side of the reflection more than the other one, and that's exactly what happened here. But I think the paint handled it beautifully. Uh, lastly, I let the paint dry, and then I'm going to paint this dock over here. It's it's the same mixture. It's French blue. I think maybe I threw in a little bit of the phthalo blue, possibly, or maybe the turquoise. Um, just a little bit of a lighter baby blue color, and there's a little bit of a reflection from the sky that I wanted to put in there, so I kept some of that rose color, and uh, it blended a little bit more than I wanted to. Um, again, my fault, not the paint's fault, um, but... You know, I, I probably would have kept this raft a little bit lighter, um, but, you know, again, you live and you learn. The last little bits that I'm adding before I add some details are the shadows and the parts that are sort of silhouetted. So um, that's a mixture of the indigo, I think, and some of that ivory black. Um, again, I'm trying to reserve, uh, preserve some of the blue color in the shadows of that raft. Uh, I'm going to use the true black for the silhouette in that the, the trees on the, the tree line, um, but I want some of the blue to be saved in that shadow of the raft. And the last major part is obviously to paint that silhouette tree area. Um, so I'm, I'm it's almost entirely the ivory black. I think there's a little bit of maybe blue blended in there, but it's almost entirely ivory black. So I, I had to put a few layers down. It tends to dry a little bit lighter than you expect it to. Uh, but that's fine. It's it's really just a silhouette, so that's not really an issue. Um, add a little bit of the squiggles in the bottom. That's sort of the shadows of the ripples of the water towards the base of the tree line. Um, and some variation up at the top of the tree line for the actual trees. Uh, the final finishing touches here were to add a little bit more shadow to those random floating clouds uh, to the right of the major group of clouds. And I sort of made those up in the reflection, so I had to add some in into the sky above as well. I added a little bit of squiggle line work for the reflection to try to add some little ripples in the water, 
Um, not sure it was my favorite part of it, but, you know, can't turn back after a certain point. But yeah, overall, I was really impressed and I'm, I'm really enjoying this palette. I've been using it uh, for a few weeks now and I, I'm really just enjoying it. Um, so uh, if this is something that you're looking for, if you're looking to get some new paints, I'll put the links in my description. They're affiliate links, so this is just one way to help support me so that I can make more content for you. If this was helpful, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, all the normal YouTube stuff, and I will see you next time.